So I still have no idea what the Chicago Bears are going to do with the number one overall pick, but in this video, I am going to switch it up and talk about potentially bringing in Caleb Williams at a USC. I know Jaden Daniels and Drake May are still in play for the Bears at number one, but Caleb is seen as the quarterback with the most potential in this draft. He is coming off of, of course, a season that was remarkably impressive. He threw just five interceptions, zero in the fourth quarter. Matt Eberflus, head coach of the Bears, said he wants a quarterback that elevates his game and is at his best in the fourth. Justin Fields was arguably the worst fourth quarter quarterback in the NFL last season. I don't think Eberflus was taking a shot at Fields, but he's just making it clear that he wants a quarterback that can make the throws and help his team win games. Because if the Bears had been able to not blow those fourth quarter leads that they had, they would have made the playoffs. For example, the Browns game, they were up 10 in the fourth quarter. The Lions game, they were up, what, like 13 with three minutes left? And that's just at the time I had, there was a couple more games that the Bears let slip away. So I do think that Ryan Poles ultimately is going to draft the quarterback at number one for a variety of reasons. I'm sure you guys have been listening to the news, so I don't want to sound like a broken record, but what it comes down to is the rookie deal. Fields is about to get paid and the thought of missing out on CJ Stroud. Caleb is seen as a better prospect than CJ Stroud. So why not go out there and just sort of reset the market, reset your team. You already have good weapons in Cole Komet and DJ Moore. Of course, you've got a defense that played lights out with Iberflus calling the plays and the, after the Montez Sweat trade, you have the third most cap space in the NFL. Let's see how many picks the Bears have. They've got, they've got six picks, three on uh, day three two um on day one one and nine and then day two they have a pick as well but the bears don't have a second round pick right now which is going to change assuming they trade justin fields so and that breaks my heart saying trade justin fields but i mean that's just the reality i think he ends up being a falcon which means that the bears would get that pick so um at number one to me i'm still not fully on the caleb train like he's gonna be on the thumbnail in this video but i still think that Jaden daniels might be the best quarterback in this class when it's said and done but just for the sake of the video, we will go with Caleb Williams. The reason why I like Caleb so much is because he can make the throws when the play breaks down. He's extremely accurate. Like there's no throw on a football field that Caleb can't make, whether he's going left, right, back, stepping up. He's also extremely mobile. Caleb doesn't just stand in the pocket and throw touchdowns. He's an incredible rusher. He just doesn't turn the ball over as well. Like he had five interceptions in 2023 five in 2022 and then four in 2021 which of course he didn't have as many attempts but still Caleb would be a good quarterback for the Bears he also did come out and say that he would love to play for the Bears because remember there were some fake reports that Caleb didn't want to go to the Bears that he wanted ownership part ownership and he also wanted to go to uh he had a list of teams so that wasn't true Caleb said himself that he would love to play for the Bears he's been watching a lot of Walter Payton so I'm gonna go with Caleb Williams here at a USC and at number nine, this is the crazy thing is, I don't know if you guys have been following the combine, but Dallas Turner has been going absolutely nuts. This guy, and we've been talking about that for weeks, if not months, guys, that the Bears should target him at number nine. But for those of you that didn't see the combine, I want to pull up his combine because it was just disgusting. I mean, I'm trying to find, okay, so he ran a 447. He's 251 pounds, six foot two has a 40 and a half inch vertical and an 83 inch wingspan and he did speak to the bears about how montez sweat would just open everything up for him so to me the pick here is dallas turner now if dallas turner goes number eight then it, then i would go with romo dunze if for some reason odunze and turner were off the board here i would go with more than likely either jared verse or olu fashanu i wouldn't complain with any of those guys like yeah quinya mitchell uh, Talise Fawaga. Oh, Nate Wiggins is actually here. Yeah, I mean, these are some incredible players. Nate Wiggins is just flying up the board because of his combine. He was already good before the combine. We knew he would test well. He's got the best coverage upside in this draft. I mean, you talk about a big time athlete with long arms and size. But to me, it should be Dallas Turner or it should be offensive line or Romo Dunze. That's basically it. Brock Bowers, I'm guessing he went five in this. Yeah, he goes five, which he has been linked to the Chargers. We know that Brock Bowers is not going to be there at number nine, more than likely. So that's what I would do for the Bears. And like the crazy thing is the Chicago is so close. They let a lot of games slip away. And if Caleb Williams and Shane Waldron had been there, it's hard for me to believe that they would have lost those games. The Denver game, for example, the even the, the Buccaneers game, for example, uh, some other games that they let slip away. 
Um, the Cleveland game, the Green Bay game, I mean, Fields only threw for 148 yards. Uh, there was only 28 yards rushing from the Bears in that game. A lot of that has to do with the play calling. I just don't know exactly the difference between Justin Fields playing for three years versus Caleb coming in as a rookie, but I do think Fields is going to ball out in Atlanta, and I do think Caleb is going to ball out in Chicago. You can't walk into a much better situation. You're walking into a team that has an average offensive line, that has a wide receiver one, a good tight end, a good play caller that turned Geno Smith from essentially a nobody, like a backup to a Pro Bowl level quarterback, a good defense behind you, a lot of cap draft capital. Uh, are not necessarily draft capital six picks but you have one and nine to me that's that's a lot more than most people have usually and then of course you have a lot of salary cap is what i meant to say the bears have the third most cap i think chicago is going to be in the in run for the division i know you can make an argument that the bears would be better off in terms of the next maybe two seasons with justin fields because he has experience but if caleb does hit his ceiling then we're talking about a top five quarterback in the nfl and that's something that the Bears have never had. Like the Bears have never been able to develop a quarterback. And if they can do it, now would be the best time because they finally are content with their guy. They weren't sold on Stroud, Bryce Young. That class, well, this class is seen as much better. Drake May would have been number one in last year's class. And Drake May might go third in this class. It's a, it's a loaded quarterback class. Ryan Poles is wasting no time. He's going to go get his guy and he's going to build around him. I get that Poles doesn't want to be linked with Fields because you know him and Eberflus didn't draft him. I know Ryan Poles likes Justin Fields. He wants to do what's best for him. But I'm just not buying that the Bears are holding off in a Fields trade to get more leverage, to get more picks for number one, because it wouldn't be hard to trade number one. Let's just be honest for a second. The Falcons, would they could move up. The, the Raiders, the, the, the Commanders, there's so many teams that can move up and give you a ton of picks, maybe even a good player. But it seems like the Bears are only going to trade number one if a team just overpays multiple picks. Jonathan Allen, for example. The Falcons give up two seconds, two first. Something like that, which it could happen. But the Falcons even just recently said that they'd rather just sign Kirk Cousins a trade for Justin Fields than give up an arm and a leg for number one. So it seems like the Bears are just going to sit at number one and draft their number one quarterback. In this video, it's going to be Caleb Williams. In my next Bears video, we'll talk about Jaden Daniels, who I think has the most potential in this class because first of all he's the most accurate quarterback in the man coverage best deep ball thrower he's got great pocket presence he's the best athlete he won a heisman he doesn't turn it over i mean i could ramble on, on and on and on about Jaden daniels but to me i think caleb's going to be the number one pick and yeah i mean i don't want him to be the number one pick i want them to keep justin fields but unfortunately the bears are not going to do what i want they're going to do what they want and everything has been linked to ryan poles trading justin fields for probably a second and a fourth rounder to atlanta drafting caleb at number one and then at number nine just taking the best player on his board whether it be a tackle a defensive lineman an edge a receiver a tight end i don't know maybe even a corner who who the hell really knows but ryan poles you he's just man he, he's a wizard 